Hello, I'm Jody, and this is the Dragon's Maze. This is Ral Zarek. He is the planeswalker of the set. Uh, Wizards of the Coast like having a uh, focal a focus point, and uh, they use a planeswalker for each set to be the image for that set. The storyline is Ral Zarek is part of the Is It. You see, in Ravnica, the whole world is a city, and each part of the city is run by separate guilds. Niv Mizzet is part of the Izzet Guild, part of Chaos and Control. And in order for things not to get completely out of hand and the whole world break down into war, Niv Mizzet discovers a maze that underlines the city. So he decides that he would have all of the guilds go through the maze. Each guild assigned a champion to go through the maze, and this is the card that represents the maze's end. You can pay three, tap it, return it to your hand, and if you have ten different gates with ten different names in play or on the battlefield, you win the game. The pre-release for this set was Friday the 26th. The 26th. Uh, they had a midnight launch at my local gaming shop and um, the only way you were going to be able to acquire any of these packs uh, you, you, had to, you had to win. Uh, so I was in the finals and I was able to acquire quite a few packs here and um, we are going to do um, an opening for these packs. Alright so we're going to just rip into a pack here. Okay, so we open Varel of the Whole Clad. He is the Simic Champion for the Simic Guild. He's a 1-4 for 3 that has the ability of pay a green and a blue, tap, and for each counter or target artifact, creature, or land, put another of those counters on that permanent. So technically it doubles counters. An excellent general for EDH or Commander. And if we were drafting and the legendary creature was not in the pack, Beetle Form Mage, Tithe Drinker, and Zurita Druid are fine picks. All right, let's open up pack number two. So we managed to open Raul Zarek, the Planeswalker of the set. He's a four mana Planeswalker for four. He comes in with four loyalty. Uh, his abilities are plus one, tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent. Minus two loyalty. He deals three damage to target creature or player. Negative seven loyalty. Flip five coins and take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up heads. Mm -hmm. All right, pack number three. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open the rest of these packs. I'm going to uh, open them and we're gonna we're gonna feature the the rare mythic or if we pull a foil we'll uh, we'll show that too
All right, so this is uh, Rurik Thar, the Unbowed. He's a 6-6 six, six for 6 legendary creature. Vigilance reach when he attacks. He, he attacks each turn if able, and whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, he deals 6 damage to that player.
All right, so we pulled the uh, Boros champion. He's Chajik, Blade of the Legion. Legendary creature, 2-2 two, two for four mana. He's indestructible, and he has Battalion, which means whenever he attacks and at least two other creatures attack, he gets plus five, plus five until the end of turn. All right, so this is Aetherling. He's a 4-5 for 6 mana. His abilities are pay a blue, exile it, and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Pay a blue, he's unblockable until the end of turn. Pay a colorless, plus 1, negative 1 to the end of turn. And pay a colorless, and he gets negative 1, plus 1 until the end of turn, which means that this creature is extremely difficult to get rid of. All right, so this is Blood Scrivener, I guess that's how you pronounce it. He's a zombie wizard, 2-1 two, two, for 2. Uh, if you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand, instead draw two cards and you lose one life. Um, not really sure if this card will see any tournament play, but uh, my guess is that it'll see a limited amount of tournament play.
All right, so this is uh, Legion's Initiative. It is a enchantment for two. It's a mythic rare. Red creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. White creatures you control get plus zero, plus one. You can pay a red and a white. Exile the enchantment. Exile all creatures you control. At the beginning of your next combat, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control and they gain haste until the end of the turn. All right, so we're gonna go over the cons and the pros of uh, the set. Um, the only real cons of the set is that it's a smaller set. Besides that, there's only one minor problem with the set. They um, did alternate artwork on these guild gates and um, for some reason, some of them came out with uh, smudged or uh, different font. As you can see the difference between the Azorus Guild Gate and the Boros Guild Gate, the uh, Boros Guild Gate, the, the font is slightly smudged. So that's really the only uh, con to the set. And the pros to this set is that it's a small set. It's 156 cards, and out of uh, 14, 15 packs, we managed to pull uh, quite a few legendary creatures and uh, two mythics. And the pros to the set is since it's a small set out of 156 cards, out of 14, 15 packs, we pulled several legendary creatures and a couple of mythics, which means that if you're looking at cost, we made all of our money back if we, uh, if we actually had to pay for these packs. So, hello, this is MTG Jody, and we're about to do a review on the new Ultra Pro Samurai Anime Sleeves. These sleeves retail for $3.99 for $50, and they fit your standard cards, uh, magic cards. Sorry, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh players, they do not fit your cards. All right, so we're just gonna pull these open. It comes with another case inside. The Ultra Pro sleeves are extremely uh, rigid and, and tough. They handle a lot of play. Uh, the only, the only uh, con to these sleeves, uh, these super deluxe sleeves, is that they do crack on occasion. That's why you should always buy extra sleeves. Hey, this is Hinkle here with South Mississippi Gamers. Um, here with our new addition on the Magic on the Group. This is uh, Jody MTG. Hello. Uh, what he did this past weekend, he went to Jack's to uh, be a part of the pre-release for Dragon Maze and tell us how that went. It went pretty good. Uh, they had a Friday night midnight release and then Saturday they had another release. And uh, what, how did you end up doing that? I saw that you come home with some cards. The Saturday release, I was in the finals. Excellent. All right, uh, well, we're gonna see more of this group grow here. Uh, we're gonna have our first official SMG Magic Tournament coming on May 11th. It's gonna be at the Gaucher Convention Center. Please look us up on uh, South Mississippi Gamers. We're on the blog spot. We're also uh, on the forums. You just type in South Mississippi Gamers and you'll see us there. We'll have details about it there. Tell us about the details of the tournament. What do people need to uh, look forward there? Okay. Um, it's going to be standard constructed, which means you're going to need a 60-card deck and a 15-card sideboard, and uh, just have fun. And Dragon Maze uh, cards will be the prize support we're having for this, so we hope to see a lot of y'all come out here for this. We only have these events about once a month. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, food will be there as well by Gulf Coast Gamers. So uh, we'll hope to see y'all then, and uh, good luck, Jody. Thank you, sir. Thank you.